Hello guys, I'm an artist Yaroslav Ternovsky and today we're going to paint a nice sketch of the winter landscape. Uh, I'm going to show you how to work, what stages you must go through, how to work with a real-life situation on plein air. Uh, really difficult. Alright guys, today we're going to paint an awesome piece of art on the plein air and today as you can observe we've got a nice nice sunny winter day a little bit frosty which is another challenge for an artist but for such brave artists as we are it's not an obstacle at all uh, so we're gonna use the limited palette I will describe it for you I've got uh, titanium white because it's got very nice covering features also got scarlet ochre some gray tones which I mixed from the previous palettes so I can't even name the particular paints I, I used here but maybe I'm gonna uh, implement those uh, hints used on the canvas also uh, umber burnt umber ivory black ultramarine uh, blue of tallow and Prussian blue as you see I stand in front of the nice landscape a kind of winter park and today my objective will be those nice winter shadows which you can see they're falling from the trees here they are look and this effect of winter sun attracts me and also the colorful effects which can see on the snow so my task is this nice winter park so let's start with overall composition First, I need to understand what is the most important thing in the, can uh, in the painting so I don't leave too much space for the background, for the buildings over there and I reserve this whole area for the snow, for this nice uh, this nice uh, tracks for, for, for light effects but I will include some trees in the painting. I use ultramarine for the general composition. And I can easily transform this ultramarine into color I need. There will be some maybe buildings which I can see. And today the weather is challenging. The sun is changing constantly because the sky is a bit overcast and it's Again, it makes additional challenge for the artist and I'd like to have more enhanced shadows and more enhanced lights on the snow, but we have what we have, so no chance to change the weather, but we can change the, the weather on our canvas. That's what we're gonna do. So I think about the trees, whether I have them enough on the canvas, maybe I will lower the horizon a bit to so this line yeah and the trees will be standing here and some shadows are gonna go from this tree and from the birch tree which is growing on the right you can't see it because the because of the limitations of the lens but it's there well i can see that we can start our painting For the next step i'm going to i'm going to use the white synthetic brush it's very convenient and you can cover the large areas with it and for the beginning i'll use a bit of ivory black and burnt umber for the snow yeah it's incredible but I do and of course I add some ultramarine and I'll get an interesting gray color which I'm going to apply all over the snowy part and if I need a bit rosy hue I will use scarlet that's that's all I need so my task is to capture the moment because the next half of the hour everything will change that's why I'm covering it very energetically 
I used the canvas of not big size, just 40 by 40 centimeters. It's quite enough for landscape sketch. And with this white brush, I just try to get the overall hue, the overall color of this snow blanket. And of course, you don't need to apply too much white because usually we've got those preconceptions that the snow is white, but its color depends on the weather conditions. And today we've got sunny weather, and we stand, the sun is just behind the also, so it produces this special light effect when the snow turns gray, with grayish, not gray, but grayish. And I prepare my gray using not only black ivory and titanium white, also apply ultramarine, and burnt umber to make it colorful and as you see we've got colorful gray hues here you don't need to try to get the even surface but we can pay a bit of attention to the tone of this snow blanket as we can see so as we go closer to the horizon, it gets darker, gets a bit bluish. That's because the sky has its own reflection on the snow blanket and it turns a bit colder here. English. Can you give me a name of your channel? I am, I have been doing art for years. Uh, oh great that's nice so you can find uh, Zello Art Center Z-E-L-O Z-E-L-O Center Art Center you can check the art there get in touch with me YouTube and Facebook on Facebook Instagram wherever you want and get in touch if you do art Oh, that's nice. All right. Yes, sure. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, and also we continue to work on our surface. Here is it. It's a bit lighter. And then we can continue with the sky, we can make it deep blue over there to show that it's a nice sunny day because it's the main indicator of the sunny weather here. And of course this blue color isn't the same all over the sky. I also apply some scarlet because, as I mentioned, it's a bit overcast there, but I don't want to show all these clouds, so on. Then I change my brush. No, let's, let's move on, let's apply some light hues over there, just on the buildings. And again, I don't use the pure white. I add some ochre to make it warmer. So don't be afraid of those variations in color all those deviations they're beautiful and moreover we've got some shadows laying on the surface of the building here it is well and maybe as i mentioned i'm gonna use some of those grays we can put it across the whole background doesn't matter in which direction, in which area, just see some oranges, trees in the background, and they don't really matter what's gonna be there because it's not the topic of so the theme of the of the painting. Here it is. Quite enough. Then I change my brush, I use not very wide bristle brush, I love bristles, especially for 
uh, fast sketch work. Just we can again highlight some tree trunks here and there to understand how they are going. Some maybe a part of a birch trunk is very interesting here. And immediately, as the sun is up and shining brightly, for the moment we can add some shadows. And this is the very important stage, because you need to find that particular color that will be nice. And as you see, since I applied all those blue colors, my painting immediately started being sunny that's why what I what I have been pursuing all this all these minutes and also now we need to pay an attention to the direction of the shadows because they all lie in different directions as you see it's called linear perspective I also got the single source of light just behind us it's very powerful sunbeams the effect just like from the single bulb and also we've got grayish and darker colors here and there and then we can add extras I don't even care which directions I put all those brush strokes in. I'm just interested in covering all the surface of my canvas. Maybe we'll make this tree trunk even thicker. will change a bit the direction of the of the shadow here it is also I combine ultramarine yellow ochre scarlet to get the proper hue so you and don't be afraid of it Maybe this shadow is not necessary here because it produces the effect of the same lines which aren't interesting in the painting. Again, as the sun allows and the clouds, they withdraw. I've got just a few moments to get the idea of the whole of the whole landscape. Also I use this ivory black plus blue tallow to get those interesting mm, fir tree color which grow there over there and I think it's interesting to, to indicate them because they they look like uh, very dark and nice stains in the whole landscape and I think it will be interesting. They will be like an anchors for our eye, and they'll get, they'll get, they'll capture our eye. Will be, will be the triggers. I also use tissues to, to clean my brushes. You can use any tissue you want. From time to time, if I if I need to change the the paint, so I don't need a lot of brushes uh, in terms of color. I don't have each particular brush for each particular color. I just use the single brush. The only difference is in technique. The bristle brush allows me to get a lot of paint on its bristles, and I can therefore convey it to the canvas. So consider your brushes as a, as a mean of 
applying paint not just as a mean of not as not, not as tools of coloring your canvas here we are and also this roof is covered again with the snow and iron and that's pretty nice no I don't so I'm not interested in all those particular details so and I would recommend you to avoid them too but if I want to show that it's building I still can uh, still get, can get some feeling of those windows but again without paying too much attention to them some orange colors over there in the background they will add some overall coloring to the to the sketch we've got white fans here and there but I don't need it being too white again at this moment I need to indicate all those footprints on the snow because that will be the thing which will help us to perceive this sunny day this particular moment therefore I use white titanium white because it covers all the underneath lanes very nicely and I mix it with a huge amount of titanium white the, the cadmium yellow and titanium white and just starting applying those footprints and remember as close as they are they turn to be brighter so all those footprints I would say they are the most important part of the painting because they help me to perceive the radiation of the sun they help me to perceive that the snow a kind of packed powder and someone who already walked on it maybe kids, maybe animals which indicates the human's presence it's also nice and of course I don't need to, to paint them in pure white so every single brush stroke has its own color so be careful with that not to use just single color not to cover the whole areas with with the single color unless you have the idea of decorative painting which is not our purpose for this particular work we are continuing working on the tree trunks because we've got time we've captured the whole the whole mood so we've got some time for those tiny details uh, which allowed by all the viewers I mean just average viewers if you want to make the painting more clear more understandable to to your guest at the exhibition I'm sure that that's the purpose for, for, the, for the artwork, it must be the purpose for the artwork but if you want just to relax and to have fun, to practice your skill, to brush up them then you can first capture the whole theme, the whole idea of emotions, of feelings, of color and then you can work on some particular tiny details to make sure your art will be sold at the next exhibition yeah unless this exhibition is for profound professionals which are definitely going to understand when you just try to to be loved by the audience and okay guys we've got this as I mentioned nice birch tree trunk here Uh, I don't want it to be very straight just need to bend it what I'm doing now and as we mentioned before that the artist is the person who might change the weather a bit 
and the landscape because we are kind of masters of our own surface here so don't be afraid of it nobody won't judge you nobody won't say that you did it wrong because nobody will get a chance to compare it to the real like situation but everyone will judge your artwork standing just in front of it in the gallery and well they either say wow it's a great feeling it's a it's a nice January afternoon we'll just look at it and the painting will leave them indifferent which is the most the worst situation for the artist so don't leave, leave your mm, viewers indifferent so make them discuss make them love make them hate your artwork but don't leave them indifferent that's a tip from some famous artists like Andy Warhol for example of course we're not talking about pop art in here and about any modern trends but in order to invent your modern trend it's a good thing to to understand and to be professional in traditional art which is our purpose here I suppose to to get more to get closer to to a professional skills so as you see I work further further on some tiny details I enhance shadows enhance uh, tree trunk volume I want to say I want to look them like 3d dimensional here maybe I'll get my shadows some somewhere I'll get my shadows lighter again it's difficult it's difficult uh, uh, sorry complex it's complex uh, blue color and it differs because this shadow as it goes closer to the tree trunk gets darker maybe more blue than those shadows which we can see from the distance over there in some distant some distant spots of those footprints maybe you can make this park looks nicer just adding some extra branches but paying attention to the color as I mentioned we're going to use somewhere those gray colors again have got no idea what mixture is it but I just got it mixing the old palettes from art classes mixing them together and I produce some warm or cold gray tones so it's not a secret just comment on the video if you want to get more elaborate advice how to get uh, cold gray or warm gray I'll gladly answer to your comment so it's not a secret but of course in this short time we don't have just a, sh a chance for the profound instruction and this video is only demonstrative again for you for your for enriching your experience with somebody else's work yeah so here it is I also can work on some extra footprints which are interesting which goes change the direction here and there I use again very light colors for the spots which are lit well lit and also can use some gray blue colors for the parts which are shadowy here we are And again what I notice now it's my kind of discovery for this landscape painting that near the footprint just below below the lightest part we've got just a bit darker area because this this is where the the snow surface changes its directions it goes deeper and the area where, where it gets into the footprint itself the, this particular 
surface gets just a bit darker. So that, that's what I now what I'm showing to you. And of course the opposite part of this footprint is well lit by the warm sun and it's again it's my task to to show it and the closer parts the closer parts to the viewer of the snow so here we are we've got this we've got this nice well lit areas i use the bristle brush again i get further and closer to the painting to understand what i want to change Today we've got minus three or four, but my back is well lit by the sun and I'm lucky. Otherwise, it would be more challenging to stand all these weather conditions because the winter, plein air, painting is always a challenge for artists because the mixtures gets thicker and the fingers are frozen but today we're lucky because we've got this nice warm day all we need just to use this advantage to get the nice winter like painting which to be frankly has the the smell of spring already. It's the the end of January and can feel it in the air. Just in a month, the nature is going to get warmer. The birds will come back, and we're gonna definitely paint a lot of new spring landscapes. Here it is just dark areas and I just want to play more with those uh, footprints again just in front of the painting to show them to show the ornament of it which I'm interested in and that was my task to show the space in front of me and I just make this a bit narrower showing this birch tree over there I want to have this kind of open space composition so that's why I left this birch tree inside my composition but in reality the birch tree stands much further you can see it you can observe it I'll show you that you can see this birch tree trunk and of course the the oral situation has changed I mean the lights uh, light is different now And I don't know whether the sun reveal, uh, will reveal itself. So I use my visual memory to complete the painting. By the way, the lot of marine painters, they, they do the same because it's impossible to stop the waves, to stop the weather condition at sea. It changes a lot of times during the day. That's why they use their imagination, they use their visual memory, they remember the particular form, the particular color of the wave, and of course they convey it by watercolors, by oil, in, in oils. Here we are, with some blues here and there. Ah, uh, you see that the sun blessed us and again showed up. So again, I use this chance to to make my color combination more accurate and to play with all those footprints, which I'm interested in. Maybe I'll show. those little bulges over there why not 
again to produce the effect of uneven snow surface which is relatively fresh but still but still indicates some presence of the of people uh, which makes painting more interesting it's not abandoned but by people but they have been there maybe a minute ago they've been playing snowballs they're just having fun kids adults that's that's all i want to indicate and of course different directions Here and there. All those footprints, they are of different size, of different light, because it's each and every footprint, it's like a, another world which you have an opportunity to reflect on as an artist. So use this chance and over there those footprints turns to be very tiny, very thin. That's another uh, that's another outcome of linear perspective. Here we are. Also, you can show some tiny particles, some branches, they appearing from above the snow, some fallen leaf, some tiny things, which shows that the snow layer, snow blanket isn't very thick. Just we can show that all those tiniest thing maybe some bushes if you'd like to have them but not very detailed of course there are some other hues grayish brownish greenish bluish but all in a painting coloring I just want to get some strokes tinier, that's why I use my finger to to cover it, to cover it with with white paint. And success guys, we've got just half an hour, we in a half an hour we made an absolutely beautiful artwork. It's not an artwork itself, it's kind of sketch which we convey the effect of sunny winter day and the sun is hidden by cloud now with clouds now but in a few moments it will appear again and as I mentioned nobody will have a chance to compare your painting to a real natural situation but everybody will get a chance to judge your painting from the perspective whether it conveys the real winter day or just another fake picture which has got only illustrative idea of it and of course the signature is the important part because later on we'll definitely forget to do it and the art lovers of the future won't recognize this beautiful art all right guys thanks for watching uh, i hope you enjoyed the video and it was instructional for you i hope that 
you will make a lot of nice sketches, etudes on your own. Click thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We're gonna make a lot of interesting, motivating videos for you. See you later. Bye.